A very good morning to you all and welcome. Welcome to Views People and News on 933 KFM this 23rd day of November 2024. A very rainy, wet morning, Saturday morning. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we are having an interesting conversation that's keeping us and hopefully will keep you all warm throughout this morning. My name is Judith Atim. I'm your host. And today we are discussing how to check the operations of money lenders. You've been following this discussion. Um, you, hopefully you've followed what happened to the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Thomas Tayebwa, and of course the concerns and questions that have emerged regarding uh, the ethical issues around money lenders, especially the online ones. But we're going to have a broader conversation, not just talking about online money lenders, but looking at money lenders in general. And to discuss this, I have my first guest in the studio. The others are still held up a little bit, but they're making it here shortly. Jonan Kandwanaho, who is the chairperson of the Association of Money Lenders in Uganda. I'll be introducing my other guests as they make their way here. Uh, Jonan, good morning. Good morning, Judith. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. So, um, actually, before, I'm supposed to first take us through uh, the issues that have made news during the week, but um, I'm requesting my producer that we come back to that later when the other guests have made it here. So, for now, Jonan, I'd just like us to talk briefly about your association. Actually, a lot of people don't know that this association actually exists. And um, there are all kinds of issues about policy and regulation around money lending. I don't know if you could just give us a brief um, overview of what your association actually focuses on. Thank you so much, Judith. Uh, thank you so much again, um, um, hearers or listeners. Uh, my name is Jonan Kanwanaho, as stated. Um, yes, our association has been existing for some time. Uh, how old is it? Uh, it's, it's, it's about uh, 10 years initially. But also, uh, along the way, the leadership changed, mm -hmm. uh, and it's told a little bit because, you see, leadership is everything. And then uh, the new leadership comes up uh, uh, through Chairman uh, Ben Kavuya. Mm -hmm. It revived a little bit, and then uh, that's when we actually transitioned. But much of the time all happened uh, during the time of, of, of Ben, and even our time, because that's when the lenders increased. One, probably because of high unemployment rates. Mm -hmm. Uh, because if you look at the statistics, the, on average, <laughs> over 80% of the lenders are below 30 years of age. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the statistics in the country, is that universities graduate about 40,000 students per annum. Mm -hmm. And out of that, it's only uh, about, um, about 18,000 that are employed. So what we the rest. So they look for different businesses. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the climate of our industry. But back to the association. The association has, has, has a good relations with our regulator. How how many how many members do you have? We have about seven hundred and sixty members, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, across we, the country or uh, across the country mm -hmm. because we have regional representatives. Okay, the western, the eastern, the northern, the central, mm -hmm. we, we are represented. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a committee that has all those uh, representing different regions. Mm -hmm. uh, but the paid up members, because you see, these general members, but they also paid up members. Out of those, there are those who have to, we, we pay to join the association because it actually has to operate. So about 175 members, are they paid, paid up. Okay. But we have a bigger group for the non-paid up, all lenders in one conglomerate. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's it uh, on the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have offices at Post Building, uh, room 314, uh, third floor. Post building is... Post building. Um, um, post building. Post Kampala uh, Road. Kampala Road, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uganda. okay. Yeah, yeah. Kampala is Road. that Kampala Road or it's the actually one near Kampala Nasa? Road. Is it no, no, no. near Nasa? It's, it's, the it's the one near Bank of Uganda. Ah, Posta. Okay, Posta the main building. post office. The main post office okay, building. Okay, okay. Yeah, main post, post office building. Mm, mm. And we have the admins, we have the leadership uh, team, mm. and that's why we're actually fighting so hard to clean up the industry. Because, mm. you see, it has been marred with a lot of bad things, mm. evil intentions, mm. evil things. Mm. And we think they are good lenders. They are genuine good lenders, mm -hmm. and we have a cause we are rendering to the public, mm -hmm. which ought to be respected and actually you know, pro profiled and, and, and even polished mm -hmm. to serve more people. Mm -hmm. So th that's the association for now. So um, when you talk about membership, does that where do the online me uh, money lenders who seem to be giving people a lot of headache lately fall? Are they also your members? The online lenders are not our members. Um, as a matter of fact, we, our regulator, which is the Uganda Microfinance Regulatory Authority, mm -hmm. issued uh, the digital lenders 
guidelines mm -hmm. in January 2024. Mm -hmm. Now, these guidelines uh, are meant to guide the online lenders. Mm -hmm. But though they are licensed by, by UMRA, they have their, their, their different category. Because as you may know, our act has different categories of lenders. The tier four, the microfinances, the circles. Mm -hmm. So they, they are given category in the, in, the, in the tier, but they are not um, part of our association. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, they also lend money. They do. They lend money. So then, who regulates them though? It's actually Uganda Microfinance Regulatory Authority. Mm -hmm. And if I may speak a little bit on the online lenders, of course, I stand to be corrected, but you've, you've seen what, what happened to the Speaker of yes, Parliament, the, the Speaker, speaker of Parliament. Mm -hmm. and, and what yeah, it's what we've been talking about. Something is committed by a different category of the lenders, and all someone hears is money lenders are terrible. Generalized term. Generalized term. Mm -hmm. So we need to dissociate ourselves from such uh, acts because we do not do them. Mm -hmm. But even when they are done by someone else, it still goes back to us. I don't know why. I think because largely, actually, a lot of people have not known about the existence of your association. And I think you need to do perhaps a, a lot, be more aggressive and robust in your outreach and let people get to know. Like, there has to be a face to the association and mm. what exactly it does. Because um, the cons... So, so f tell me, um, in your association, if someone wants to come and borrow money, what are the conditions you give them? So the association as an association does not lend money. You don't. Yep, your members. But, the, the but, but you definitely member, have guidelines that you give to your members, absolutely, right? Uh -huh. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in the association, we have the lenders. And you see, we have different categories of lenders. There are, the, there are, there are those who are big tier, I'd say big tier or slightly mm -hmm. grown up, mm -hmm. who lend on a monthly basis. But there are also those um, who lend at a micro level. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that lend to markets, the people that lend small monies, you find someone has a capital of 50 million, or probably 100 million, small lenders really. So we have those two categories. Mm -hmm. But the act and the regulations require us to publicize the charges that we make. So the key thing is that um, when a client comes to us, what you're looking at is not necessarily someone's collateral, but rather someone's ability to, to pay, pay back. back. Mm -hmm. Because you see, I can only cl uh, uh, clash with as many clients. But if I clash with a client, they will not only come back to me for a loan, but also they will not refer me anyone else. Mm. So we have scenarios where a client comes and they have a collateral, but their cash flows are terrible and you don't lend to them. Mm. So we look at the cash flows first, six months bank statement, mm. so that we can assess what is his debt to equity ratio. Can they afford this loan? Mm. But also, too, do they have a collateral? Because in the event that things go south, you need to have something that can impel someone to sit down and discuss with you, but not run away from you. Mm -hmm. So the collateral is also something very important. It, it, it's a requirement, but it's not a prime thing. The prime thing is someone's affordability. But also three, there are documents to sign. Because we have the loan forms, the loan agreements, a letter of offer, to confirm that actually the transaction has actually happened. Mm -hmm. And all these ones, even if someone does not know English, there is a clause or there is an attachment for interpretation. You are at liberty to get to take to your lawyer or someone else to interpret for you what it is you're going to sign. Mm -hmm. So that in the event that there is something that goes wrong, you do not say I was under duress. Because you came by yourself and borrowed the money. But, but Jenan, um, when you were talking about micro level the micro level tier of, of lenders yes. you mentioned you say this is small this are small lenders who are giving out perhaps uh, 50 million shillings yes. but that's not small money I mean, no as capital they have 50 million shillings as capital they have uh, 50 so they're borrowing on average yes, so they're on average 200,000 500,000 300,000 uh -huh. and that's where I think majority of people actually I, fall I agree with you yes I agree with and you. I think that's where we're actually getting the headache from at the moment so the small borrower the small borrowers were going for 300 500,000 maybe to pay off tuition they're under pressure to offset their rent um, or just to meet maybe certain, to do business like yes, in the market also yes yeah. to do business in the markets for for people with quite smaller capital um, there are concerns now that some, some, some lenders would actually ask you for, let's say if you're going for maybe a sizable amount, like five million, which yes. is not quite a lot of money, but it is in, 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 when, when you're hard pressed. Um, someone is asking for, land, for a land title and so on. And there are concerns that even when some people pay up, their titles are still held as, as collateral. I don't know if you've had these kinds of complaints brought to your association and how you're dealing with it. Uh, I must say that um, 
the our regulator mm -hmm. who is the Uganda Microfinance Regulatory Authority has an, an arbitration team and an arbitration department and and I know customers uh, complaints handling department mm -hmm. where if a customer is aggrieved of what of how he was treated or there is something contrary to the law that was done on the customer mm -hmm. they are actually free to move there and the regulator has the authority to even cancel the license but also as an association in the event that the regulator is not arbitrating very well we stand in for the for the customer for the client mm -hmm. as well as for the lender uh, we had scenarios but also realize that some of the clients do not want to pay. Someone borrows, he doesn't and want they, to pay. It deliberately, deliberately, even when they have the means. Even when they have the means. But they want to actually battle with the, with the, with the, with the lender. And that's how we come in. We've had a few scenarios where a client has actually paid their loan obligations and the lender says, you know what, I'm not going to give you your title. Mm. Because look, this person has a copy of the agreement. He has a copy of the letter of offer. Probably when they were paying, they paid by the bank. So they have a deposit confirmation. So what would be the basis of you refusing to give this person a title? Mm -hmm. In any case, it's not in my names. So w what do I do with it? I can't transfer it. So do I just love looking at it? Mm -hmm. So I think that some of the statements um, uh, are said, probably I'd seen Maris in court, uh, because they are not grounded. And I believe, I, I, I like talking facts with evidence. Because ask yourself, why would I refuse some, to give someone their collateral if they have paid the money? Mm -hmm. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. And in case such a thing arose, this, there are platforms, regulator, the association, mm -hmm. that can arbitrate, even the police, because that's a, that's a criminal matter. That's a criminal matter. Mm. That's very interesting. Um, so thank you, Jonan. I think You're now welcome, now that we have my other guest, uh, let me w take this honor and welcome him. John Walugembe, who is the executive director of the Federation of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises. I don't remember the last time I hosted you, but it's been quite a while. It's been a while. <laughs> yes. That's true. Good morning, John. Good morning. How I'm, are you? I'm happy to see you and happy to have you on the Pleasure show today. Pleasure to mm -hmm. be here mm -hmm. to discuss important issues mm -hmm. that... I have an impact on our country. Okay. Yeah. How has the Federation been? Federation is okay. We are supporting small businesses because we believe they're the bedrock for the growth of any economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, those colleagues of ours who still have hope in investors, this one to say that investors do not play a role, mm -hmm. but the development of the country is primarily the responsibility of citizens. And in our case, those would be uh, SMEs. If you go to the U.S., they call them uh, small businesses, family-owned businesses, and so on. So I think we must keep our eye on the ball, and I think that should be by supporting the growth of the SME sector. Mm, interesting. Mm. So um, now I think let's, let's take a look at uh, the big stories of the week. The highlights of the week um, and um, just we get a few comments and reactions from you people as we wait for our other guest honorable faith nakut the woman member of parliament from the park district she just called a while ago she's just around the corner the roads are quite bad and sometimes people have to take a whole detour to get here but I, i'm sure in the next few minutes you should be joining up joining us rather so the first thing of course uh the uganda law society president um Isaac Semakad is under fire from within his own fraternity, uh, a section of legislators and some of the members of the council of his own society. This, of course, comes from a speech he delivered at the FDC Katonga event on Monday, where it is said that he used derogatory language against the person of the DPP, Justice Jane Abodo, and previously against the Attorney General, Shirio Achuanuka. Um, so actually, members of the, some members of of, of um, parliament, especially from the um, um, the Karamoja side, made a, a had whole, held a press conference, and I think we shall wait for Honourable to actually come and we we talk about this when she's here. Uh, the other issue, of course, is um, Dr. Kiza Besije and Hajjabaid Rute's kidnap. Uh, they are in, in Kenya, their extradition, detention, and the charge in the military court here in Kampala, and their subsequent remand to Luzira prison. The two had gone to Nairobi to attend um, politician Martha Karua's book launch, and um, they were picked up on Saturday, last Saturday, that is. It's a week exactly since this happened, from a Nairobi hotel by security operatives believed to be from Uganda. From there, they were driven to Kampala, um, taken to Machindia military barracks, 
where they were again picked up and then they appeared in the court martial on Wednesday for alleged crimes related to being in possession of firearms um, contrary to, UP, to the UPDF Act. And also yesterday, Friday, uh, 19 supporters of the opposition National Unity Platform who pleaded guilty before the court martial and were sentenced were released um, after the president gave the pardon to them. And uh, also the International Criminal Court uh, has issued an arrest warrant for uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the commander of the Hamas uh, militant group. Of course, you've been following what's been happening in Isra between Israel and the Palestinians. It's more than a year now since um, Israel actually launched its assault on Gaza. It's, it's actually very heartbreaking. And so I've taken a few weeks actually without watching that particular news from, from that side because it's, it's just depressing. Now, issue, the issue of money lenders also um, uh, has come up. Uh, there are issues of them capping interest rates uh, to be charged on other loans they give out and so on. And I'm glad we are having this conversation on how to check the operations of money lenders. And we shall be delving a little more on that. And also on Tuesday, the Standard Gate Railway project finally moved from artistic impressions to groundbreaking, which was officiated by President Museveni in Tororo. Hopefully that takes form uh, very soon. And we also join our East African partners, Kenya and Tanzania, in actually using uh, railway transportation to ease connectivity across the country. And also on Wednesday, uh, popular artist Patrick Muluana, who is popularly known as Alien Skin of the Fungon Forest crew, was arrested and charged over alleged theft of a mobile phone and remanded to Luzira prison till 9th December. Uh, but he was also been summoned to court on Monday to answer fresh charges of alleged assault of medical personnel and guards at security guards at Nsambia Hospital. And uh, on Thursday night, unfortunately, two people were shot at Ntinda Chiwatule by unknown assailants. Um, one, Albert Cook Tugume, who is a mobile money agent, who was a mobile money agent, and a brother to Kampala Deputy Lord Mayor, um, died instantly while a border border man, Banaba Sabiti, who tried to save him from the assailants, later succumbed to his injuries from Lago Hospital. This suggests. Um, Quite a lot. It's been a packed week. Eight just highlights a lot of what happened. So you can imagine the others that we didn't actually mention today. I just want quick thoughts and quick reactions. Jonah, you can pick whatever you're interested in. But let me. I think let me start with um, Joseph here. Jonah. Jonah. Yes, yes, yes. John. Let me start with John. Mm. Yes, you on, quick on thoughts. The, on the issues. Pick any that you think you want to talk about. Well, I think uh, the world should be ashamed of itself. Looking mm. at what's happening in Israel, I'm happy that ICC issued an arrest warrant. Yeah. I think most people tired of double standards with regard to how it conducts its business, and would appreciate if we do the same for Western countries, France, uh, UK, US. You know that start and solicited those that cause untold damage mm. across the world. On the issue of mobile money uh, incident in Tinder, it's most unfortunate. And I think that this kind of lawlessness uh, government needs to ensure that it's well handled because, you know, th these are part of the financial infrastructure. If you're mm -hmm. talking about mobile money, banking, and so on, so you start scaring people, and then they start working for six hours, 12 hours, which affects the 24-hour or the night economy, yeah. Yeah. as you call it. So I think this is something that ought to be taken seriously and not... Uh, consider it to be an isolated incident. Mm. On the issue of the musician who went to a hospital and beat up people, I think this is part of the confusion and lawlessness that we need to really uh, take. I think this gentleman needs to be really taught a lesson. You cannot be above the law. Absolutely. Yes, you can be a celebrity, mm. you can be a musician, but we It doesn't take away the fact that you have to respect No, 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 no. Mm. And it shouldn't be, because now, you know, it's we are good, concerned because it's a hospital, but you know, these kinds of practices are quite common in other places. Mm. So I think uh, this is something, and I'm happy that he's now in prison mm. and he's, you know, mm. being taken through uh, a fair uh, kind of legal process. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Jonah? I'll pick on, on one matter that I really um, want to associate myself with, and that is a game changer, which is a standard gauge railway. Mm. Uh, if you look at the statistics, over 70% of 
um, the Ugandan's income is spent on transport. If you've traveled countries, you've seen interstate railways. Yes. You've you've seen countries where you, if if I'm planning to be at at KFM in Namongo, I, I can live in Tinder knowing that it's going to cost me 15 minutes to get here. No obstruction, no nothing. nothing. You get at the station, real time, the train arrives and you jump in and you move. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's a milestone that will transform the country, but also it will have a huge impact on one, uh, our GDP, but also on the individual incomes. Because then I'll have a luxury of saving a particular fraction of the 70% are spending on transport, the taxis and the buses, to, to probably invest it in other businesses. So to me, I think that it's a milestone, and I pray that it is fast-tracked. Because remember, it is meant to, the salary gauge railway is meant to link with the meter gauge railway for, for domestic uh, movement. So mm -hmm. I think it's a key thing, and as a country, we should be proud and 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 associate uh, and appreciate of, of what is what is coming on board. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, thank, thank you, you very much. So um, I think the other I'll, I'll I'll still go back to Honourable Faith when she comes in here, especially about um, the Uganda Law Society situation and the comments that were made about uh, the DPP because they were quite vocal as legislators from Karamoja and they they, they made a statement. I'll hear from her when she's here. Mm. But in the meantime. Um, oh, I'm told it's time for us to take a break. <laughs> let's let's go for a break and then we'll return and continue with the conversation. Welcome back. <laughs> welcome, welcome back from the break. Uh, this is still VPN here on 9 with the <laughs> KFM. And it was impressive. Some, something is making my guests quite excited in here. And I'm going to find out what it is exactly. 29 minutes to 10 o'clock. We're talking about how to check the operations of money lenders. And... Um, let me take this opportunity to now welcome my last but not least guest to make it here, Honorable Faith Nakut, woman member of parliament for Napak District. Honorable, good morning. Good morning, Chair. Good, good morning, to have you. It's good to have you. How's the weather treated you today? Oh. Mm. You didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to get out of bed. <laughs> None no. of us did. None of the us The rain, did. the cold. Yes, yes. It was just good for okay. Saturday morning. Okay, okay. So uh, before you came in, I, I had actually run through a list of um, things, some of the highlights that happened this week. But in spe specifically, I'd like you to comment about uh, the Uganda Law Society incident, uh, the statement that was made by the President Isaac Semakade. As members of um, from the Karamoja region, as members of Parliament from the Karamoja region, you had a press conference. Yes, uh, right. in which you, you actually talked about some of these issues. Could you just give us some, so, could, you, could you just say something about that? And also if you could comment about uh, the incident of Bessie's arrest from Nairobi and being brought here and so on, as, I mean, from where you sit as a legislator. One, it is true that uh, early this week there were statements that were made by the president of Uganda Law Society uh, against the person of the DPP. We wouldn't mind if the Uganda Law Society president talks about issues of work, how to improve competence. Even the DPP is his member. Uganda Law Society has close to 30,000 members in Uganda, and the DPP is one of those. So for him to check performance of the, the DPP, it's the right thing to do. We have no question about that. The only problem is when he chooses the words to use to, to kind of insult or to shame the woman in, in, in Jane Francis Abudo. Because with the words he referred to, we are describing a female genitalia, and he said that one from Karamuja. Now, when he, add, he added that one from Karamuja, it meant he bundled up all of us, the women in Karamuja, who carried that thing. So, in effect, we had no choice but to respond appropriately. Mm. That's why yesterday we had a press conference by the Karamoja Parliamentary Group, and we have demanded an immediate and public apology. Mm. If Semakade Isaac was not the president of Uganda Law Society, perhaps we wouldn't demand this level of, of apology. Because of holding that office, we regard him with high respect, given that there are many lawyers in Uganda whom we look up to. Uh, now, imagine if a woman has a problem, can we seek legal counsel from people who already despise us? That is the challenge. And then making it uh, almost routine 
that every time he, he wants to challenge a woman, he will select those derogatory statements that describe our genitalia. It will, it will affect the positioning of women in this country. Actually, it's not just a Karamoja thing. For us in Karamoja, we, we are pained because the person of our Jane Francis Abod, the DPP, has struggled to rise through the ranks and using a merited approach to reach the level of a DPP. It is not Godfathers, God who we knew no one for her to become a DPP. Mm. And she's not the first DPP Uganda has had, mm. but she is the first to receive this level of ridicule. Why? And for us, we view the women and girls in Karamoja view her as a role model, as someone, as a sign of resilience, someone who can brave all the odds to reach the level she has reached. She is a role model. Now, for her to receive those insults from the president of Uganda Society, by the way, this is the not the first time he's saying it. He said the same statements when she had just been appointed. We ignored it. And okay, gladly he was not even a president then. Now when he's a president with too much powers of president, Uganda Law Society, he has repeated it. And so he deserves to be, to be rebuked. Mm. We have demanded an apology. We also think that amid the, the 30,000 lawyers in the country, Uganda Law Society cannot fail to have a president who is sober enough, who, has the, who chooses the right words to use, who respects women mm. and considers us as his mothers, whom we can confide in when we have issues as a legal counsel. So we think that Uganda Law Society can do justice to us, the women in this country, and get someone suitable for the job. I don't think it is too late. They will ex we are demanding that they replace and execute the new president. Mm. Whether they listen or not, it has already tainted the reputation of the society, the profession. Me, I am an accountant. I subscribe to the CPAU. And one of the things that we are charged with as members of the institute is not to bring the institute to disrepute. Therefore, we are, are, are what we do when we are handling professional matters, such as those which he, he was attempting to correct his own member. He was attempting to, he, he was saying that he wants to, to clear the table, to bang the table, to clean the house. You don't do it by using vulgar language. Mm -hmm. You consider the profession. On the matter of the arrest of uh, Dr. Kiza Besije, it, it is uh, regrettable that he had to be arrested from another country. I cannot comment on the grounds for which he is uh, being detained because in the media I have also listened to an audio which he, which he depicts that he had a conversation on a, a subversive activity which I cannot substantiate. I cannot even say that that audio statement is valid that he had, a, he had plans or he had a conversation with somebody else on a subversive activity to remove, to, to change government mm -hmm. using that uh, approach. It, if that was the approach that Dr. Kizabesije took, which I doubt, it is also really regrettable. So we believe that he, he will be served fair, fairly. Mm -hmm. And given uh, that he has been a, pres a person who contested for presidency for four times, and that means he also believes in the Uganda's uh, electoral system. He can still come back and contest uh, in the next election. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable yes, Faith. So, John, I'm told you're actually leaving at 10.30. So we have actually less than an hour for you to be here. Yes. And um, I think I'm, I'm going to give you a lot more time. Um, before the two of you came, Jonan and I were actually talking about the Association of Moneylenders. And yes. he was giving me an overview of what they do, how they work, their members and membership. Of course, this is in line with um, the discussion we're having on how to check the operations of, of moneylenders. You followed what happened to the Deputy Speaker of Parliament. Mm. And I was having a conversation it with a colleague. To too. You see. So I was having a conversation with, with a colleague, and she also told me, how bad of an experience she had, the, the harassment from people she actually doesn't know and so on. And I, sadly, I, I learned from Jonan that they do not regulate the online money lending sector. 
uh, which is under the microfinance regulatory authority. But I don't, I, I actually now thinking, I'm wishing we actually had someone from there to, to actually shed more light on, on this. But um, generally, your quick thoughts, first mm. of all, about what is happening in that sector. I don't know, have you also fallen victim, John? To the online guys. They that no, they've, they've, you it's know, smarter. one day yeah. I, I went, I went in the <laughs> village. Like everyone has. <laughs> I, I went to the village <laughs> and, <laughs> and met a priest. Mm. You know, I just met him, uh, one of those events. And then on Monday, someone started calling me that this priest has a loan of 200,000 and we see you in radio communication with him and so on and things uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. So, uh, so, there's a certain level, and I think we all agree that there's a certain level of misbehavior on that side of digital lenders. lenders yeah. mm. And what's also funny is that most of digital lenders are not even registered lenders, because if they were registered, then it's easier for them to, mm -hmm. to, to, to regulate it. But if someone is out there and you don't know who they are, then you, you cannot you, trust them. Then you can't trust them and you can't regulate them. So, but I'm, I'm so, just the so I can just wake up one day and say, I'm now going to create a digital platform for money lending, and that's. If people are broke and they borrow from you online, because mind you, you're not asking for land title, you're not asking mm -hmm. for anything. Mm -hmm. The only security you have is harassment. For recovery. For recovery. Yes. <laughs> so that's, but, but why, why? But the biggest question, you know, the issue is here, we turn things around. Why are we blaming? Because it, this is a market for finance, supply and demand. Mm. If you are saying there is finance available in banks and so on, government has put in place a mioga, what not, why are people so desperate to borrow from this people? I think this is a question we should, because you can't say this people are bad. This is a capitalistic economy. It's not about morality. Mm. It is about demand and supply. If people are there to demand, the supply will appear. So what I would say, and uh, just to respond to this regulation, this regulation is flawed from an economic standpoint. Because government cannot regulate prices in a private market. Mm -hmm. When there is demand and supply, what you create is a black market. And I'll give you an example. During COVID, government said, we don't want people taking border borders. People would take border borders, yeah. they would reach policemen, they get out, and they get leave. off, and then they, so long as there's demand and supply, you can't really regulate. So gov what government is simply going to do is to stifle the activities of formerly registered uh, microfinance institutions and money lenders, whom it was controlling anyway. For instance, personal have owned the microfinance institution in 2011. Mm -hmm. When we are doing our returns to Umrah, you state whom you are lending, at what interest rate, they make sure they uh, review all the charges as and so on. As a basis for approval of the license. So I would say there's a problem in the sector, but I, I, but I think the solution, we need to have discussed a solution more so that we come out with the relevant solution. Mm -hmm. And then the other question I have to say is, let's look at the supply side. What drives the high interest rates? Number one, the cost of capital. This is the biggest driver of high interest rates. Because if a commercial bank lends at 23% mm -hmm. and I go and borrow from them, uh, we, including the charges and everything, I'm a bit 25% per annum. Mm. Then I also add my interest. I also add my risk and transaction costs. So the interest rate has to be high. It has to be high. And, mm -hmm. and why, why are the commercial interest rates high? The biggest issue, the big, highest reason why commercial interest rates are high, among others, is the fact that government itself is borrowing domestically. Yeah. So commercial banks are not lending to consumers, they are not lending to farms. They are choosing to lend to government because gov it's easier to just deposit your money in government bonds and securities. Mm -hmm. And that's what most banks are doing and that they are returning a healthy profit. Why lend to an SME is going to run away when you know that you can give money and to government and it repays you mm -hmm. and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. So that's the first issue. The other issue is what they call the operational costs of these uh, uh, entities. You see, you, you, a lender is managing risk. For commercial banks, they say, to reduce our risk, bring collateral. Eh? Bring a house so that even if you want to run away, we, we stay know, with your type. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. The microfinance institution says, uh -huh, for us, let us do away with that issue. 
But in return, we have to be on your neck. We have to visit you. We have to see your home. We have to see where you work. We want to take pictures and so on. So they try to come up with innovative alternatives that can stand in, that can minimize the risk profile. Because generally, Ugandans don't want to pay. Even us, when someone, you lend someone uh, money, Getting back, getting it back. In, you must fight. <laughs> in Luganda, there's a statement saying, "Our today, the meaning you learn when you are seated, but when you are demanding, you have you to have be standing." Stand. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they do always. You have to stand up to collect the money. Uh -huh. that's so what they do. the issue is, Uganda generally have a bad culture of repayment. So it, in fact, some of these people are complaining about money lenders. If you, 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 you critically look at them, they are multiple borrowers. Mm -hmm. Someone has borrowed from there, he has run away, has borrowed from there, has run away, things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's the second issue. The third issue are what you call other transactional costs. You know, you, you incur other costs. Maybe you visit a business, you're profiling them. Maybe you give them a passbook. Maybe you do this. So there are those other costs that a business incurs that have to be uh, paid for. So if we really want to bring down the high interest rates, first of all, we must start from the commercial banks because these money lenders borrow from commercial banks. Mm -hmm. Let's first bring down the interest rate in commercial banks and government itself is the culprit. It needs to turn away from domestic borrowing. Mm. It crowds out mm. the market. It crowds out the market. Then government itself must not abscond this regulatory role. When it comes to commercial banks, it says, no, we cannot determine interest rates. The market should determine because why is it that the CBR, you have spreads of I don't know how much between the CBR and what the banks lent. Mm -hmm. When we tell them, no, you cannot put the CBR at seven, maybe nine percent, and then the banks are charging 23 percent. So government says, oh, this is a market based economy. Now the economists come and educate us how we are in a liberal economy where everything the market must determine. So now money lenders where government draws the line Selective. and Same. comes out with a speculative interest rate that has no academic basis. Because if you ask them, why 2.8%? How did you calculate it? What, what was your basis? I've told you the three drivers. So if you've not tackled the cost of capital, you've not improved operational efficiency, you've not reducing transaction costs, how do you impose an interest rate of trade arbitrarily? Okay, what government would do if they wanted to impose anything would be to impose what they did in the small business recovery fund, mm -hmm. where they said transaction fees cannot exceed this percentage mm -hmm. of the loan. So they should have said, for instance, uh, microfinance institutions, you can't control cost of capital, we can't control your operational efficiency, but you can legislate and cap transaction costs. Actually, there's a clause on that in the bill. The, the clause that you cannot lend beyond 100% of what it is that you lend. In a year, which yeah. trickles back to 8.3, which trickles back to 8.3 percent per yeah. month. Yeah, it shouldn't be directly like 2.8. Yeah, and it's already provided for in the new act. Yeah, you cannot lend. If I lend you hundred thousand, I cannot in one year go beyond hundred percent of that amount. In so that is in a period of so what? Yeah, so that clause is also there. Uh -huh. So uh, why wouldn't you also follow that clause rather uh, than? Uh, and then, uh, then the other uh, issue is then it would be good round. this issue of capping interest rates is not new. Uh -huh. During COVID. The Kenyan government chose to cap interest rates mm. because the interest rates are going through the roof. Uganda said we can't, which was the right strategy. What happened in Kenya is that the access to credit plummeted. It reduced. The businesses were, the, the, were hurt they the most. A lot, yeah. Zambia did the same. Same problem. And the reason this is critical is that most Ugandans are not banked. Only 14% are using formal institutions, institutions banks, yes. MDIs. Mm -hmm. The rest are out here. And the question is, why are they out here? This is the biggest question we should be handling. Not running after money lenders. They are responding to a demand. Is there, are there bad practices among money lenders? Of course, there are some bad ones. Just like you can't say that a border border person knocked someone, therefore all border borders are banned. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is misbehavior in all kinds of sectors, and what you need to do is to be able through regulation to solve that issue without necessarily stifling the growth of the sector mm -hmm. as a whole. So I believe, and then the other issue also which I've talked about is the quality of borrowers themselves. 
Ugandans don't want to save. Ugandans don't keep records. Ugandans will come and borrow for X and deploy the money for Y. Yeah. Then when it comes to repayment, it becomes an issue. You know, so all these issues, I think, have to be looked at critically. And I would say that the Ministry of Finance rushed. And rushed because the president, you know, president is a very consistent person. This year, his focus has been on money lenders. Every time he stands up, <laughs> there's a time his focus was on nads. <laughs> he would stand up, nads, 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 nads. Yeah, because nads. it's, it's pro, it, it reflects how much attention he's being given in uh, about that sector. I'm sure the people in his ears are talking about that, flagging that a lot, and that's why he's, he's probably going in that direction. I wouldn't say so. I would say that when the president is focused on something, mm -hmm. which is a good thing, He's the kind of person that wants to see things being accomplished. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, he's focused on uh, money lenders. What Umra should do, they shouldn't rush with such things. Instead, they should a, improve regulation. Like, for instance, those digital lenders who are out of the regulation ampit, mm -hmm. they should work with UCC and other people who are digitally savvy to ensure that a digital lender can't just send money to people and without doing due diligence. Without so doing due diligence. Yes. So it means the issue is that this digital lending is slightly above Umrah's competence because it's merging the lending with the digital sphere. So it means you have to create a task force that brings together Umrah and UCC, UCC mm -hmm. to be able to regulate these people. Mm -hmm. But if you uh, just m m tighten the screws on the formal entities that are really regulating, you know, solving the problem. So I would say they should do that for the digital lenders. Two, they should work with government. For instance, if I were government, I would put in a fund. I would put a fund in UMRA to provide cheap capital mm -hmm. to microfinance institutions and money lenders and impose conditions. Okay? And this has been done. The MasterCard Foundation has put something called the Small Business Recovery mm -hmm. Fund. Uh, in the financial sector depending and together with UMRA they give money to financial institutions that meet a certain criteria to disburse and they have a certain they limit eh? you can't charge transaction fees of this much so that's the only way you can drive down interest rates so what government should do is to learn from that model get about 100 or 200 billion deposit it and put it into a microfinance access fund then these guys, once you pick money from there, because they are looking for capital, it means you reach out them from commercial banks, they start picking money from you. you the biggest driver, 91% of interest rates, is cost of capital. So you control it that way, not necessarily through legislation. Mm. Yes. Okay, interesting thoughts. So uh, there's a comment here in my inbox. So there are also border border loans. So many companies also open up and give uh, border loans house loans, land, but border border guys have suffered more. They have lost those bikes as they get confiscated by the lenders. They've also lost property due to the unfair interest rates and other harsh payback terms. I don't know what, that, that's just a general comment. Any of you can respond. Um, Honorable Faith, can I hear from you your thoughts about this issue of money lending before I come back to Jonan? Okay. And of course, the aspect of regulation, like, like John was saying, I mean, how can that sector actually be regulated well? The money lending sector is a very good sector in this country that is supposed to help open up the financial markets to people who cannot access a commercial bank. So it is a sector we all cherish. It is a sector we all wish to protect because even in a district like mine that has no bank completely, the money lenders are there. So that sector is good. But I wish to first of all disagree with my brother June when he said that uh, it is the focus of the president. I would disagree because the amendment that we made was not really about the president. The, the Tier 4 Microfinance Money Lending Act 2016 was passed by Parliament. And in that Act, Section 89 indicated that a minister will bring an instrument on which the money, the lending rates would be, would be controlled. From 2016, the minister did not bring. And so you saw a boom in the money lending business. Actually, more money lenders showed up than there were, than there were the, 
the borrowers. So what John was saying, demand and supply, one, one of those, the, 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 the suppliers, the suppliers of money became actually more. And because Ugandans are there and many of them are not aware of uh, financial literacy. Their ignorance on matters of money made them exploited. Yes, there are some moneylenders who have been doing a great job. But there are those that bad seed. There is that bad seed that has spoiled the water. They took advantage of one, the absence of a regulation of a regulation on the on the capping as provided for in the 2016 Act. Mm -hmm. The, min the minister did not bring, so they took advantage of the absence of a cap, and they charged anything. Some actually charged. Uh, I don't know whether John is aware. At least I am a witness. I bailed someone who was charged 27% per month. You multiply by 12. That's, and two, that's almost 300. Close more, to, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Someone had borrowed 1.3. I even have a contact of the money lender. Someone had borrowed 1.3. And then within a year, he was being demanded even a car from it. Mm -hmm. Yumura has testified before the Committee of Finance where I sit that they, they, they supported to rescue uh, someone in uh, a Ugandan in Busia who had, uh, who had borrowed five million shillings and the moneylender came to demand for his fuel station. Mm -hmm. And that's how bad. The examples are many. That bad seed spoiled the sector. And so in 2021, Parliament started demanding for the instrument from the Minister of Finance, the instrument to regulate. That was 2021. In 2022, again, I have been following this matter personally, given my experience of bailing someone who had been charged 27% per, per, month. per month. And that had now accumulated for, for it, 12 it, months? They had now, yes, they had now accumulated beyond 12 months. By the time they, they asked me to bail the person, they, uh, he had borrowed 1.3, it had reached 15 million. Jesus. That's that's crazy. Yeah, and, and yet that he's not the only one. This one is the only someone who was close to me and asked for support. What about the rest of the Ugandans? So taking advantage of the illiteracy or, or, or of the need when someone is completely desperate for money and then you charge beyond what someone can afford. Mm. I would have agreed with John on the matter of the cost of capital. But what is it which justifies, which justifies 27% in a month? when there is no commercial bank that charges that. So so even if it is a, you, you're borrowing from a commercial bank at 23% per year, are you now going to charge 27 per month? It, it doesn't justify. If you're borrowing at 23% per year, and that's then still less than 2 point something percent, or maybe 1.8, 1.9% per month. That's, yes. that's quite reasonable. Yes. Yes. So, so some money lenders became very, very arrogant. They took advantage and exploited Ugandans. That is the burden that the, the members of parliament brought to the House. By the way, it took a bigger portion of our time for the last three years debating on issues, more matters of national importance. You find a colleague, one from Kiwi, from Kamuli, uh, raised a matter of national importance on this matter. And everybody said it is true that there is a group of money lenders moving all over the country. They come and camp in your trading center and they, they lend people money at exorbitant interest rates, even per day. Can you imagine? Even per day. And they take people's national IDs. That, that's, that, that was a, a crisis that we were trying to cure. And every time we asked Yumra, Yumra, they say, Yumra was protecting the moneylenders, just like my brothers here are doing. Mm -hmm. They never understood the pain of the citizens. Uh, that is how the amendment came into being. When, when, when the, the amendment to rationalize Yumra came for the first time in January this year, mm -hmm. 
in, in, in March, we received the report of the committee, and I was in that committee. The committee said, you is doing a good job. This is a, a money, a free market economy. The same arguments that John is giving now, the free market economy should allow the market to, de to, de to, to, to determine, determine mm -hmm. the prices. I wrote a minority report, and I presented it. My minority report indicated the challenges of money lending that required regulation, and Yumra had uh, proved that they could not do it. They were completely conflicted. Yumra was protecting. I asked them three times every in, in, in our meetings, whom are you working for? The money lenders or for the Ugandans? Mm. So, so the, 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 the regulation part was skewed more to protecting the money lenders their business interests, of the course. The business, yeah. mm -hmm. than to protect the Ugandans who, benefit, who, who are being served. Mm -hmm. and so, so the bill was withdrawn. The minister withdrew the bill when, when it was supposed to go to second stage. And then it came back the second time. And that's why we passed it the last time. Now, the last time we passed it to, uh, to, my, to rationalize Yumura, one of my colleagues, the Honorable Yusuf Mutu, Mutembli, with whom I had been working for for the last two years on this matter, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, it affected all of us, we felt very bad. Uh, we saw our own colleagues being arrested for for for, for borrowing twenty million uh, money lenders. Nothing. And there's some members of parliament who went to this to uh, the money, money lenders. But why didn't they also go to the banks, which uh, because they they have why? the kind of of capital. They they have that steady cash flow that. Ideally, a bank would not refuse. You're a member of parliament. You have five years in the house. Why would it, Why would I go to a money lender when I have that, 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 that revenue stream? Why should they? Why should yeah, they? There are many reasons why people choose where to go. It's not only the cost of capital. The, the, there is also the convenience, the ease in which you can access the money. A bank will take time to process for you. Normally, alone. it's two weeks. Normally, with banks, I know. Yeah, it's two but weeks a money lender will do it for you. And if you have the paper, but yeah. a money lender will do it for you on call. The, yeah. the money lender has lent to parliament. That, that's on the phone. laxity so and the borrowers. There's nothing you sign. No. That's, that's the laziness. Why do you disregard the convenience? The borrowers. Yes. Got the money By the time someone goes but to the money cost? lender. But at what cost? But why don't you pay it conveniently also? Because it's borrowed. Okay, wait, wait, wait. John. By the time someone goes to a money lender, that's why I talked about the quality of the borrowers. Mm -hmm. If you looked into that member of parliament, chances mm -hmm. are they it may have running loans in, micro, in mainstream financial institutions. So sometimes uh, they talk about digging one hole to fill another. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you may say, oh, let me borrow from this micro money lender. I pay a bit the bank. Then I relieve some pressure as I... Okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting conversation. Honorable, we are going to come back after oh, the break. Seven is just signaling me that it's, it's time for a break. It's one minute past 10, past 10 o'clock. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back from the break. It is six minutes past 10 o'clock. It is VPN. That's Views, People and News. My name is Judy, the team. And uh, just a quick reminder about my guests. Uh, I have Mr. John Walugembe, who is the Executive Director of the Federation of Small and Medium Size Enterprises, uh, Mr. Jonan Kandwanaho, Chairperson Association of Money Lenders in Uganda, and Honorable Faith Nakut, who is a woman member of Parliament for Napak District. Also, don't forget that this uh, show is streaming online. You can actually listen and also watch as on www.kfm.co.ug. We are talking about how to check the operations of money lenders. And before we went to the break, Honorable Faith was saying something, and I had asked the question, why would MPs who actually have steady cash flows for five years choose to go to money lenders just for the ease of, of, of you know, of getting the money? But Honorable, we shall come to that later. <laughs> I, I want to hear from Jonan. Jonan, John, I, I'm sure you and John said, are looking at this from similar perspectives. Really the prescription of 2.8% per month is something that you are not in agreement with. You think that is actually unfair. But when you're looking at it from the perspective of the citizens, the average borrower, I don't want us to look at the people who are coming to borrow 50 million and above. Mm -hmm. this, this is not the struggling economy. Mm -hmm. The vast majority who actually come to money lenders are getting 1 million shillings, 300,000, 600,000. Kids are going back to school. I need requirements. I, and some even borrowing just for food, maybe 100,000 and I need to stock up the house. 
that's the biggest number of people who are actually going to borrow these kinds of money. And I think when the law prescribes for 2.8% per month, which translates to 336 at the end of the year, mm. it is definitely about protecting these categories of people who are struggling. And I think that's where mm. your minority report actually yes. comes in. Mm. Um, so, the, But you, as the business people, you're looking mm. at this as being unfair. Of course, you have to make money. Mm. But the, the central question for me is then we need to strike that balance mm. between you guys making the money but also not pushing our citizens who are already living on the fringes mm. to just, they're already on the tipping point and they're just going to, to tip over and collapse and die because of all these kinds of stress. How do we ensure responsible and ethical ways of doing business? You make your profits, mm -hmm. but also the citizens do not have the, those kinds of pressures that they're subjected under. Thank you so much, Faith. I want to bring it closer to, to the local people. Mm -hmm. The Montua Joe. Yeah. Let's, let's, bring, let's look at this scenario. Mm. I am a market vendor. I am trading in Matoke. Mm. On average, a Matoke, uh, you know, bunch costs 25,000. And you see, well, Gembe also mentioned something. Only 14% of the population of Uganda is banked. Yeah. They have the bank statements, yeah. they have bank accounts. Now, this is not the Matoke trader. So he buys the Matoke at 25,000. He sells the Matoke at 30,000. He has made a profit of 5,000. He has a turnover frequency of three times a week. This person has made profit 5,000 times three times a week, times four weeks in a month. This person has made profit of 60,000. If you compute by percentage, you, I, I, I know my, I, I've done my math um, because my background is chemical engineering, and, yeah. and I've also been interacting with these people. <laughs> the percentage, if you compute per month, this person has made profit of 240%. This lender who is lending this lady is lending at 10%. Where is the problem? Per annum, per, 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 per. Per I'm looking at a lender who is lending at 10% per month to the market vendor. Yeah. But this market vendor has made 240% Correct. of profit. Mm. Now, if you push to 2.8, what is going to happen is that this lender is going to pull out First and say, I'm not going to give this person. doesn't make sense. This thing happened in Kenya. According to the report from the Central Bank of Kenya, when they put the, the cap of interest rate, small and medium enterprises access to money reduced from 25% to 15%. That is 10% percent percentage points. Less. Less. Mm. So you can imagine what will happen to our economy. Let me give you another scenario. We have this person, a trader in Chikubo. Mm. He's importing consignments. This is a real, real, real life example. The person was importing combs. You know combs? Yeah. Small combs. Mm. Yes, for the hair. Mm -hmm. Buying them from China. Mm. This person was buying a comb at five thousand at five hundred shillings. Mm. Mm. This lady imported fifty thousand combs. That is twenty five million. Mm. The cost of a comb was five hundred. Yes. She was selling them wholesale price one thousand five hundred. Okay. She was making profit. This is real real, real life example because yeah. we find this person. Yeah. Profit was one thousand per comb. If you look at the total profit she made, it was 50 million. So when you compute, that is in, in a three, a percentage wise, 200%. Yeah. Mm. This is 200% profit. Mm. Now, even if you say the turnover is probably in three months yeah. to have sold out all the combs, yeah. and you spread the percentage by three months, you're looking at an average of 67% per month. Why wouldn't someone go to a lender who is lending at 10%? and get that money and clear the consignment with people waiting to buy the combs and sell the combs and they are all happy. Now what's going to happen is that when this person goes to the, to the bank, first of all, they don't have good bank statement because they are not banked. The bank tells them, you know, because you see, your goods are assessed when they arrive at, 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 at your area. Yes. They don't assess them from China. So my consignment has arrived, we are going to Christmas. My consignment has arrived, I'm waiting, the, the people are demanding, they are waiting for things because they have the retailers, they have clients mm -hmm. yeah. to sell to. You have to take things to Gulu, Kitugum, up country. Within a certain time Within frame. a certain time frame. Yeah. Now, this URA has assessed your consignment. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what, whereas you plan to, to pay 10,000 US dollars on this consignment, from the assessment, they say, you know what, it is 20,000. 
this person has, had budgeted for 10,000 US dollars. Mm. Going to the bank would mean two, three months. Because they're they're not they are not With the possibility of not approving. No, in April, when the clients... <laughs> they're they waiting for the... For yeah. The loan will be approved in April when the, the other even has, has even actually moved. Mm. The, the people are waiting to demand for these things. Why wouldn't this person go to a lender mm -hmm. because they have a profit of 66% a month, give this lender 10% a month, get the goods, send to this person, and they're all happy. Now, what's going to happen is that lenders, if, if we choose one day or one month, say, all lenders, let's close shop, like the people of Chukubo did, you will see the staggering in the economy. Yeah. Because Yumura according to the report, because Yuma regulates over 1,700 members. Mm. Mm. But lenders generally in the country, we have over 50,000 lenders. For the regulated ones, they say, from the research and from the um, Ministry of Finance, the turnover is about 1.4 trillion. But this is a small Anna. fraction. Per annum. Mm -hmm. Uganda yeah. This is a small fraction, 1,700 from uh, formalized reg registered lenders, yeah. disregarding the 50,000. So you can imagine if you incorporating the 50,000, how much does it come to? It's a big thing of the economy. Now, taking back to... But government. this law is going to grow the unregulated ones. Thank this you. is the point. Even the regulation... This is the biggest today. issue. The law is going to make worse what you're talking about. Because the challenge, what's happening, is not being done by the regulated lenders. It's being done by the unregulated, the unregulated. lenders. Unregulated. So if you make this the regulated lending uh, difficult because you're regulating interest rates, it doesn't make profit. It means some regulated lenders will choose to go back and operate black informally. Market. So you'll grow the black market. This is why we say placing price caps on products in a market-based economy like ours does not work. This is the idea. So, I, I want so to speak to the help policy. Me, help me understand something. Yes. So in the black market, yes. people choose to no, charge what they want? because there's demand and there's supply. supply. So, so like I fact, can choose a different interest let me rate ask, right let me ask, now. Let me ask a question. And, 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 and the question exactly. because Let me ask a question. Mm -hmm. This uh, Honorable Nakut, you talked about this lender of 27% per month. Yes, per month. Did you find out if this lender was registered? With Umrah, I did. Did not. they have a money lenders license? Chances are, I did, did not, not find out because a, did, a, a, the law requires you to display the license. I, I, I decided to At tell that money lender, mm -hmm. I will pay you what I can afford. Mm -hmm. It was demanding from one point three was burning about fifteen, 15 million. million. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I am going to give you your your three million shillings and get lost. Mm -hmm. I, I just had to harass this, the money lender. That's mm -hmm. how I survived. <laughs> and then he accepted. <laughs> so you everyone in Uganda has become a Judith, Judith, yeah. Judith like, I, I've not concluded. People are using mafia tactics to get their way around. This, this is just crazy. Judith, Judith. The, ma the, the, the lenders are using mafia tactics. The borrowers are also <laughs> What do you do? Judith, I'd beg to conclude on this. Yes, yes. I want to speak to Honorable, uh, to Honorable uh, Faith. Looking at it in the government perspective, yes. the policymakers, yes. we have key instruments that the government has. The National Development Plan 3 now going to NDP 4, which is a key instrument for the country. Mm -hmm. But also look at the initiatives like EMIOGA, like PDM, uh, Parish Development Model. Mm -hmm. One of the key pillars that is consistent in all those documents, all those instruments, is financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. Where is the financial inclusion in this capping of this interest rate? What happens to the, to, to the, to, to the, uh, the, 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 14, the beyond the 14% mm -hmm. banked people? Mm -hmm. Is that financial inclusion? And you see, looking at it at a macro level, looking at it at a macro level, mm -hmm. is that someone who's going to invest a billion dollars in the country, in any other industry, mm -hmm. will know that, look, I might invest this much in this country, mm -hmm. and some of policymakers wake up one morning and say, this is it. Because stakeholders are not consulted, they're not engaged. We're not engaged as a decision of the lenders. In, in, in this, this decision, this all. legal notice that was issued. We were not involved. In 2016, you were engaged when the... No, for the 2.8. The 2.8 that 2. was released, that was issued um, this month. We're not concerned. I think 2.8 is just reasonable. Be given that you're, borrow, you're borrowing from commercial banks at 23 per year, you, you, uh, when you... So it's, it's but you've not get it for my personal... Slightly less than 2% per month. You've not get it for my personal... Slightly less than 2% you, yeah. mm. yeah. yeah. mm. per month. You've not get it for my risk... Do you know how online lenders are losing? Do you know why they are calling? You know, because um, uh, they're losing a lot. They're losing over a lot. seventy percent but of the money you they lend put online. Your money to a risky business. Not. Is that the only business you can do in Uganda? No, no, no. Even if that is, even if that's the only business for someone, 
I think the, the issue of how do you do due diligence as a as a lender. Hmm? I cannot just come and give a, someone's phone a number stranger. and say this is the, the number you should call in case I Judith, I want to speak the due diligence on the point of due diligence. Stephen, let, let Jonah finish. John and finish, then we come to John. I know John. John, John highlighted it. Mm -hmm. John highlighted it. Our culture in Uganda, as Ugandans, mm -hmm. is that we don't want to pay. I have seen it hands on, even for the people that you have assessed very well. Their bank statements are very good. Their cash flows are very good. The person who adamantly says, "You know what, Jonah? I'm not going to pay you. Let's go to court." So, same applies to online lenders. I'll assess you, and you can afford the money. I give you the money. You still look at MTN. That MTN Momo something. I, I actually use. Do you know how many people change, change lines? Yeah. Do you know people change? People how much? change lines because they, really. The do. person who doesn't mind his number, he has borrowed fifty thousand. He says, "Yeah, these people are harassing me." I have my person at the farm. I sent him his salary on his MTN. He says, "Jonah, you have killed me." <laughs> I said, "Have I killed you by? <laughs> <laughs> have I killed you by paying your salary in time?" Uh -huh. He said, "Why no. didn't you call me first? Hey, I owe. I have Momo. <laughs> I have Momo. <laughs> That's not Momo has your loan." <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering, will this person plan to throw away the line? <laughs> so the character is not good. Uh, Everyone good. keeps telling you, no, no, don't send on that one, yes. send on this one. So you actually yeah. have to call before you actually pay someone. Hey, should I send on this line? <laughs> should I send on this line? <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can imagine such a state. Mm, mm, so it is, it is terrible. Even we people who can afford with good statements, even for online lenders, mm. you can lend to someone and they refuse and to they pay disappear. you. They disappear. And you don't know where they are. Where they are. You, you cannot trace them. It's 70% of the money they lend, they lend online. It's yeah. lost. Plus, that's why they also bitter. They, no wonder that I'm, I'm supporting their recovery methods. They're really so crude and they're affecting almost all lenders. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but even when you assist someone's financial capacity, people still are not good at paying. Mm. You know, you got the money, you signed the documents. Why wouldn't you pay? But who is standing in for the lender, policymakers, honorable faith? Yes, who, who, is, who is protecting us? Yes. The lenders. Yes. Yes. We, we are protecting you. We are protecting you, but you are voters. John, John, I'm coming to you. John, I'm coming to you. I, I think oh, oh, that, that's also an interesting, an interesting issue that John is raising. But how do we find? How do we get a win-win situation yes. for everyone? For the, for the, yes. for the lenders and Thank for you. the borrowers. Yes. Okay. We definitely things have to work for everyone. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll make yes. some recommendations here mm. first. Uh, it's extremely important that UMRA uh, does its job. Uh, where it, the job is beyond it, like the issue of regretting uh, digital lenders, we should not leave a lacuna. Mm. You see, if you saw mobile money, this is what happened initially, until they had to split business, the mobile money thing had to go to Bank of Uganda, where there's a lot of expertise and stuff. So I think that such a change needs to happen. To say, okay, maybe digital lenders uh, should be regulated in a special entity mm -hmm. that has expertise in digital mm -hmm. uh, finance. Mm -hmm. So we solve that problem. Mm -hmm. Then on the issue of other unscrupulous practices by money lenders, that it means UMRA needs to do more to ensure that there is a helpline when people face such, they are able to report. But also the borrowers need to borrow from registered money lenders. You can't go and borrow from a quack who has no license and then you complain that money lenders are misbehaving mm -hmm. because the registration imposes some uh, responsibilities on you mm -hmm. and very few registered money lenders will do uh, such things. Mm -hmm. The other issue is that must also address the underlying issues, the cost of finance. And government itself is the biggest culprit. It's the biggest driver of high lending rates in this market. Why? Through borrowing unnecessarily on the domestic market, most of for consumption. Okay, so if they allow the commercial banks to lend more to businesses and to households, it means it will spur up access to finance and it will lower mm -hmm. uh, interest rates. Mm -hmm. The other issue is that government itself can intervene. The way government, because sometimes we have market failures. No, we talk about a market-based economy, but the market-based economy experiences market failures. And the role of government is to intervene, mm -hmm. to rectify such. That's why you see government putting money in Uganda Development Bank, government putting money in Emioga. Why? Because they see that the market is not working efficiently. Women are not able to access money. They say, let's put you up. Mm -hmm. Youth are not accessing money. They put U Uganda youth 
you know mm. so if we see that the microfinance sector is not working well they need to put what i call a fund of funds in fact the microfinance support center that's supposed to be its work that's not right. lending and competing with mm. because government you cannot be the regulator and at the same you time also a service provider in the <laughs> same market you see so the microfinance support center should be a fund of funds where these microfinance institutions can come and borrow at low interest rates mm. and then they they are required to ensure that they don't charge beyond a certain uh, mm. threshold mm. so for me that would be the most sustainable route mm. then we can also support these microfinance institutions not just these are private people but government can support them the way they've done with the schools because if a school is supporting the objectives of government government can come in and support them with teachers and stuff like that so government can support these entities to improve their operational efficiency to cut down on operational costs mm -hmm. because once they cut down on operational costs they are cutting down on interest uh, rates among others so for me this would be the kind of solutions that would be uh, mm -hmm. Judith, i'd like to, to supplement yes, yes, what yes, yes. what john is saying <coughs> Do you ask yourself why drug shops are usually located in one in one closest range, mm. in one area, Proximate, yeah. even pharmacies? Mm. Then you ask yourself, how do these people make money? Mm. Research shows that when a buyer comes to a, a, a premise to buy something, they usually don't buy at the first stop point. They buy at the second stop point. Or even the third. Or even the third. Mm. So meaning that at the end of the day, these people get sales even distributed. So all of them benefit. If you turn that to the lenders as a proposal to the government, which is a good approach for regulating the lenders, put a catalog. The regulator can say there's a catalog for lenders. Mm. It is online. Mm. Jonaki Holdings is lending at 5%. So and so is lending at this, at this percentage. Now, me as a consumer, I look at these different mm. companies. I click on one. I say this one has the best rate. Let me choose this company that is lending at 4.5%, because the company is lending at 5, 4, 6, you choose one, because then it will confirm what we are, what we are as a free market economy in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Choice of the buyer and choice of the seller. Mm. And then forces of demand and supply, at the end of the day, is that people who are lending at 15% or 20%, they run short of business. And then they realize, you know what, I think we had better reduce the rate. And that's how the rate will come down from the 10, from the 8, to even no, 4%. So, so John and, and, and John, so UMRA is the regulator. Absolutely. It's mandated to... U UMRA is a regulator and yes. it has a mandate uh -huh. to regulate TFO uh -huh. financial uh -huh. institution. But does it have the cap capability? Because also the... Um, you said the digital guys are also under UMRA, right? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. should be under UMRA, but yes. UMRA does not have the capacity to regulate uh -huh. those. That's, that's the question. Even the capacity to regulate all others. And that's why... Including the TFO. That's why... Not they, they all. I'm telling staff. you they have 35 staff. They are over 60,000. Maybe even more. Let's say 100,000 mm -hmm. operators in the market. Uh, so for me... That's so why this discussion. How do we strengthen? That's why this discussion. Sure it that's, does its work. That's why this discussion of rationalization of entities. We, we ought to have discussed it very thoroughly. thoroughly. Because now, what if Umra was rationalized? Mm. You know, we are happy they want. You know, but there was Actually, a possibility. Actually, Umra was rationalized. Okay. Was it rationalized? Yeah. It was rationalized. So now it has Where gone is back it to the finance? Becoming a department uh, analyst for finance. We are waiting for the president to to yes, assent. So, so, the so the you day. see, it means we are making the problem worse. We are simply making the we are simply making the, 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 the problem worse. Do you know why Umra caused itself problems? Actually, allowing the money lenders to charge exorbitantly. No, they don't have the capacity. This is the point. You've given them thirty-five staff to regulate six hundred eighty thousand. So now Umra has been has been rationalized. It's an impossible job. It's going back to finance as a department. Yes. It was already grappling with challenges of sure. low staffing yes. and, and resources. Now government is going to so, make so policy what does and implement. This, what is the implication now of this to the broader financial sector, especially the money lending economy? It's going to get worse. And this law just makes it worse. This is the point. Because when you make such a law, you're going to allow the growth of a big black market. First of all, you're going to lack capacity to regulate. So because you lack capacity to regulate, all these guys are going to figure out that there's no point why should I go under a regime that imposes an interest cap of 2.8%, yet I can op operate informally and they won't find me? Because they don't have capacity. They'll find so, they okay, won't. Okay, so as a, as a, no borrower, as a borrower, 2.8 works no for me. Why, but as a lender, 2.8 doesn't work for why you. Do why do I have... would work for you then? That what doesn't again we cannot, me. We cannot fix in, prices. In a market-based economy, you can't fix prices. Allow the market to operate. What you do as a regulator, you create policies yeah. and laws. Good that ensure... No, the banks don't 
cap interest rate. The Bank of Uganda does not cap interest rate. What government does is to set the CBR as a, an, an indicator. Uh -huh. That is so it. What we are saying, what we are asking, first of all, what we are asking government to do is, because the Bank of Uganda provides money to banks. That's one of the advantages. Yeah. But for tier four financial institutions, no one provides nothing. So we are saying government use, use it, it does not. It, does it not. lends directly. In any case, if them. they know you're a lender, they don't give you money. It competes with them. So they we are saying government. government now that Umra has gone back, congratulations. Let's use the <laughs> microfinance support center as a pseudo bank of Uganda to provide cheap capital to these so guys so and impose and, and at that point as you're giving capital you have the power to impose interest because it's your money but someone can borrow their money and then you cap how I, I want to share the implication of this of, of the of taking back Umrah to the department as a department to the Ministry of Finance I am privy to have tested two markets we have a branch in Zambia mm -hmm. turn, turn around time to get a license in Zambia is a week Mm. They have visited offices, they have senior systems, they give you a license. That's five working days. Five working days. Mm -hmm. Record. Mm. Here in Uganda, Umrah had tried. Mm. Inspector with a low number, to me, yes. my experience, yes. they come and inspected me, even the branches, and gave us the licenses. But when that which has already happened, of becoming a department of the Ministry of Finance, you're going to reach a moment, the lenders have applied for the license, they are waiting for the license, and the ministry is waiting for the approval of the budget or probably the reading of the budget second reading and before you know it the bureaucratic tendencies of the government people Make waiting for licenses was... the, the, the loans before, issued are illegal before Yumura came into being who was giving the licenses but you know how the market was operating they were getting it from the magistrate's court because to court. reduce the work of Yumura to and licensing is actually Yumura's weakness and that's what we saw Yumura was focusing well, at how many licenses have I accumulated this year not how many are doing the right thing. But a weakness to a weakness is not weakening them more. The solution would have been how can we support you? Can we give you more staff? I can we give you I more funding? I agree with some of the suggestions. In 2011, we used to go to the magistrate's court, court to, to get, get a money lender's license. Umra took power from. In fact, some those courts were even more efficient than Umra. Umra. Yes. Of now, why were you protecting Umra? <laughs> <laughs> no, honorable, but no, honorable, the minister is not only. I want to say that, but you, you took that word from, from me already. Uh, honorable, so of course, the 2.8%, like they're saying, yeah. is not something they're happy about. And from their explanation, we're going to see a lot of black market lending and so on which again puts the borrower at a disadvantage Correct. and then we shall again be running back to parliament you know we need a law we need regulation and so on and so on the the issue of a black market someone will be held liable for not doing their work the, what parliament has done is good enough to in, invest upon tin, on to interest the minister of finance to ensure that at any one point there is a regulation for this sector so, so what Parliament has done is good. The 2.8 is just a starting point. It's a good starting level. So if, if, if uh, the black market grows, I tell you, Ugandans will still be cushioned even though the black market exists because you can report to police. There is where police can start from. Previously, there was nowhere. You would report to police and the police is defending the moneylender on account of having a license. Now, if you report to police on, on, on exorbitant prices, the police will just swing into action because there is a, a, a maximum. There is a cap. Well, but that's that's assuming, that's the assumption that our police force actually does the right I thing. I hope they are listening yeah, to me. That's, they that's should the actually work. And even to Ugandans who are listening and, to me, and, they and, should. And I am not saying all our put men in uniform, are actually, the, the police force <laughs> especially, are actually bad. There are a lot of officers who do incredible work. Incredible. But again, they're human beings with lots of weaknesses yeah, and yeah. flaws. I've been to a police station just to report the loss of an ID, which was not even my national ID. Yes. And... I had to be asked, oh, give me 5,000 here. Give, for just that's an that, idea. That, that's so challenge. now I'm a money lender doing black market business and so on, and I've been caught. Why are we not? Why am I not going to give him 1 million shillings and say, you know what, just and let that, me go that, and that continue with challenge. my business and so on? That's the corruption challenge we have to deal with as a country, not only in police, in every department of government, mm. even in the ministries, mm. even as you, you seek for registration in the ministries, licenses, mm. what? Mm. You can always find a bad person. Mm. That's a problem with our country. We have those 
those bad people who will want to exploit you mm. at any given chance. I want to speak to the issue John said, and I agree with him, mm -hmm. the issue of digital lenders. Mm -hmm. If we leave it open, that market can be abused. The, those are the people who called the deputy speaker, you send this money or else we, we blackmail you. I had also received a similar thing. And I just told them, as usual, get lost. Were well, they shouting at you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the digital lenders, but also the digital investment platform needs to be regulated. Some Ugandans have their money. They have invested yeah. in what we call bridge waters, in what there was some silver, something, and their money disappeared from nowhere. Mm. People Cap went back to kitchen. Ca <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> was capital kitchen or there was capital kitchen, there was bridge waters. Wait, are those those um, the poultry? Those, those, no, those are different. Investment uh, schemes. Those, no, those, schemes. those, those fall schemes. under the capital Invest markets authority. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. But the yeah, entire digital space, of, the entire digital invest. space of both lending and investing is not properly managed in our country. Very that true. is a window. Correct. Yeah. Correct. A for window abuse, for, for abuse, fraud. fraud. Yeah, for fraud yeah. We Ugandans can lose everything mm. if mm. we don't handle that. Okay. And I, I hope oh, the Ministry of Finance who are listening to this show will take action and bring a bill to the House and see where, where this can sit. Mm. If it is, if capital markets needs to be supported, if the police, in some countries, the police have, have a unit. They have... Now we have the crime, financial crimes. They have a yes. unit, unit which, well. is, which is... The economic a, something at, 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 at for example in media. kenya the police have, have a unit which yes. is supporting capital markets in kenya the police have a unit which is supporting capital markets. the capital markets are working towards it mm -hmm. so so they track digital lenders and also digital in, in investment in, investment uh, apps mm -hmm. they track them to their countries of origin mm -hmm. we need to do that otherwise mm -hmm. people will exploit yeah, our okay. country oh, okay so but uh, I also agree with him, with John, on invest in, in, in adding more money yeah. so to that sector. Not necessarily uh -huh, Umrah, uh -huh. maybe microfinance support center. So they can and support the lenders. But they should stop lending directly. Okay. And, and, they, and they lend to money lenders yes. Yes. to reach those people who have no yes. banks. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. I agree. It is a positive way to, to uh, balance. Thank you. It's 10.34 and John, I know you're, we've already <laughs> held you for four minutes, for four extra minutes. And, but before you go, yes. uh, there's a question here. Do you think we need to have more time to re-examine this issue of interest rates? I think and so. And the operations of money lending? I think so levels? and it ought to be discussed across board. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, the challenge with coming up with piecemeal regulation Yes, is I that agree. you you don't uh, look at the root causes we need to look at the former financial institutions they are posting huge profits yes. and they are not mm -hmm. lending to businesses and households why mm -hmm. they are simply lending to government mm -hmm. then uh, we sh we should look at the issue of the uh, banks mm -hmm. do we think maybe Uganda commercial bank is necessary I to be yes. brought back maybe yeah. an agricultural yes. bank is necessary mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. because there's a, an inefficiency there maybe the ba all that burden now is falling on money lenders That's and now we are saying now and they are the problem. The okay, they are the problem. So the, we need to start from that point. We come to money lenders. We look at regulation. We look at entities. We look at rationalization in that context. Because maybe Umra was rationalized without looking into the role that they could play, play. the positive role that they could play in growing the sector. If they had sector. been supported enough. If they had been supported, because if you have 35 staff, what can you do? Mm. This is, you know, so... The this, this, of this, 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 so, so, this, so these are all issues I think that need mm. more in-depth discussion, mm. not piecemeal, rea reactionary legislation. Mm. Yes. John, thank you. Thank you very, very much. I think we have to let you go. It's 25 minutes to 11 o'clock. Uh, we do appreciate you for your time and your insights on this conversation on checking the operations of money lenders. We're going to take a break and then when we return, uh, we'll be opening our phone lines. If you're listening in, please do give us a call. Uh, share with us your thoughts and even your experiences with money lenders, whether they're digital money lenders or uh, physical money lenders. Our lines zero three nine three nine three three nine three three zero three nine three two six two nine three three zero three nine three two six two nine three four zero three nine three two six six nine three three zero seven zero one nine three three nine three four zero seven five one nine three three nine zero zero. That's after the break. Budget, budget Um, we are opening our phone lines. Uh, you can give us a call. We're talking about how to check the operations of money lenders. Have you borrowed money from a money lender? Whether it's online or you went to their office somewhere, 
What was your experience? And how do you think we can actually uh, make things better for everyone? I'm not saying they have to be shut down, but where things are not working out well, how can we improve? We do have a caller. Hello. Juma from the bedroom on the back of the Yes, Juma. How are you today? I am fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for being with those economy. Thank you. <laughs> and the accountant says, the bastard. All right. Share with us your thoughts. Have you borrowed money before from a money lender? I've been denied because I don't have a national ID. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you know someone who has? Uh huh. That's why I'm saying I have three things to talk about. Mm. One is mindset. Yeah. Two, the second one is the politics, and the third one is the service. Okay. Now you'll find, for example, an MP has gone to uh, money lender. And this is a very MP who has become a culprit, not paying back the money. Remember, he has all the qualification documents which qualify him to borrow. But Juma, whom they know Juma is a lemon, is a farmer, he digs from Busega, he, he, he will be denied just because of having no natural ID. Now, what comes to your, to, your, to your head like? Those who have the qualification. They are failing to pay back the money. But there are those who are being denied the service. And they have that potential to but, pay. But Juma, there are people who actually take their national IDs and still default. So I don't think it's just a question of you not having a national ID, but do you have the capacity to pay back and are you willing to actually pay when you borrow yes, money? Yes, I am willing to pay, but I'm not given that service. Now, I want, they, I want them to tell me what how do they do it? Like it, those who are qualified, they are not being given the service. But those who have the potential to pay, they are not being given the services. It is clear in my head. Then the final one is the money lending is a representation of the World Bank. And I thought they are, that their obligation came on progress to serve mostly the common person. So the World Bank does not lend to individuals. The World Bank lends to governments, to countries, that's not not to right. people that's like you and I, Juma. That's why I'm saying the money lending, they are like a representation of those of World Bank who give to those people who have big, big accounts. But the person who has come to do money lending businesses is to serve the community. <laughs> but no, their appetite is too high, higher than the one of the banks. Thank you. You've, you've made your point. I've actually, I, I, I hear you. I know where you're coming from. Thank you very much. And I, I, I do feel your frustration. Do we have another caller? Hello? Okay, we don't have. Um, I think we'll, we'll just get others later. So Juma is talking about mindset. And, and Jonan, that's something you had also alluded to before. Yes. Wait, wait on <laughs> Hello? Good morning, mother. Good morning. Yes. Uh, who am I talking to? This is Councillor Serunjoji Patrick from Mutumetibazila MC3. Yes, Serunjoji. Thank you very much for calling. Please proceed with your comments or questions. Yeah. Now, when uh, when it comes to money lending here in Uganda, mm. we see that most money lenders come from the same region. They all speak the same language. I don't know what's the problem. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have many of them this time. Mm. Another thing, eh? Uh, they really charge a lot of uh, interest, very high interest, eh? Mm -hmm. On very small loans, eh? Yeah. Uh, leading, leading to confiscating some of the property, mm. valuable properties, eh? At a very low, 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 uh, at a very low, very little interest. Mm. No, they charge yes. high interest and then take people's property? Yeah, they have confiscated a lot of property, like land, eh, this side. Mm. Very small so loan. Mm. Very small loan. Eh? You get it? Yeah. Now, I, I really, I would like the government to regulate the interest, eh, mm. the interest which you charge on every loan. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And that's what we're talking about. Government says they're putting a cap. Um, interest should be 2.8%. So hopefully that should be good news for you if you're a borrower. But it's not good news to the lenders. Jonan here doesn't seem to agree that that's a good move for them not at all. or for the country. Thank you very much, Serenjoji.
Okay, I think let's let's just proceed with the discussion. Uh, those two callers should be enough for now. We have to also wind up. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Judith. Uh, reacting to Juma first, he speaks to the point of financial inclusion. Mm. And what he didn't clarify is, um, were they asking for national ID as a collateral or an identification document? Mm. Because, you know, I've belabored, I do YouTube channels every week, YouTube videos, to educate both the borrowers and the lenders. And one of the things I've been emphasizing is, if you're going to borrow against the national ID, you as a lender, to lend against the national ID, in the event that the person fails to pay, the client has refused to pay or has failed to pay, can you foreclose on the national ID? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. Exactly. Can you recover your money from the national ID? No. The answer is no. no. A national ID is not a collateral security. It is an identification mm. document mm. True. that is owned by the country. So it cannot act as a collateral. So Juma was not clear whether it was asked as an identification document mm. or as a collateral. Mm. If it, is a, it was asked as a collateral, then it is illegal for both the lender but also for the borrower is meant to be aware and also change his mindset to know that an ID is not a collateral. True. But it is an identification document. If I go very fast to uh, Seron Joji, um, as owner will come on board, Seron Joji, uh, lenders coming from the same region, I, I, I think I'll reserve my comment on that. I will comment the thing is, that. the thing is, <laughs> Judith, if you go to capital shoppers to shop, do you first ask who the who the owner is? No, that's the thing. And and I I have gone to the market or the supermarket <laughs> to buy the things. No, but I also think there's representation in terms of I think also there's some national character reflected in 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 the money lending. I I, I don't think if I go to the north I'm going to find a specific. But even if I did, I want a service. It's, it's exactly no, not the person. True. Yes. true. I don't ask the supermarket people who, who, who the owner is. Yes. I want where my good, do you come from? Where do you come from? <laughs> so I think that's not grounded, and I, I, I really think it's not... Um, mm. But before you go, there's another comment here from... Uh, someone sent me this, Masawi Ivan. Uh, he says, we have a lot of money lenders who are blind to the law and are dominating mm. the market. So the, some are operating informally, but they're charging very high interest rates, like 20% or even more. Oh, they need collateral, but their intent is to rob Ugandans. Government should create a clear registration policy at lower levels and registration, besides leaving it to the board, of money lenders. I don't know who the board here is exactly. Can I speak but to that? Mm. Before they emerged Umrah, we had worked out um, an MOU, an arrangement mm. to help them publicize because you see as we highlighted, they are understaffed. 35 people. Mm. We said, why don't we strike a nexus where we can help you work together, clean up the industry? Mm -hmm. Because it is true that some of the lenders do not know the law. Some of them actually do not know that they've been capped at 2.8% as even up to now yeah. with these conversations. They do not know. Mm. So the point is, Umrah had taken a step. But if you have regulated about you know, 17,000 out of the 60,000, it is a drop in an ocean. Mm. The thing is, how do we transition the 60,000 uh, 60, to the 1,700? Mm. So that they are all aware of the law. They are all doing the right things, and they implement. They operate, and they, they uniformity. operate uniformity. Yeah. They all have standard documents, and they are following right procedures. Mm. Umrah cannot do it alone. Mm -hmm. It is us who know the lenders. One of the things that we, we were pushing for is that I visited Ghana, in the lending industry. Mm -hmm. When I travel to Ghana, when they are issuing a license to a lender, the president of the association of the lenders in the country signs on the license. So it means that mm. whoever has a micro, whoever has a money lending business, is an obligation, not forced, but it's a given, that they actually have to belong to an association. Mm. Is there any bank in Uganda that does not belong to Uganda Bank Association? The, the point is no. Mm. Is there any law that dictates that they should belong there? I'm not sure. Mm. But the thing is, you can directly force the the lenders to belong to an association so that they can easily be regulated. Mm. If there is an arbitration issue. Because, you see, we've seen scenarios. If I have lent to a person who is signing on the license and he has refused to pay and he's meant to endorse on my license, can he endorse the license? That means he may not. Mm -hmm. He may, he may not. On the grounds that he does not endorse based on, on the loan that they have with me, who is there to protect me? As a lender. As a lender. Mm -hmm. Because as, an, if, if I, if as, as the president of the association, I sit on that board to, to issue the license, then he can come to us and say, look, my things are clear, things are okay. I've been denied the license on these grounds. And then they're also protected. Mm. So he had worked out a way, mm. we're coming towards the light, but now, lo and behold, things are backtracked. Because now if Umrah is now a department under the Ministry of Finance, 
the future doesn't look very good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Honorable, so, you need to help. Yeah, but so, so before, before we come to Honorable, and that's, that's what I had asked John earlier, this tension between you know you the lenders and we the borrowers we are happy oh it's 2.8 now this is favorable translates to something reasonable at the end of the year but you're saying guys this is just not right it's going to push us undercover and operate in the black market and so on but again and and, and i understand john's argument that you know uh, and, and what you're saying that the forces of demand and supply should be at play here mm. but like again like honorable faith says when you leave this unchecked we find ourselves in the very situations we're running you away from. Gonna you know it. exactly because if if someone borrowed 1.3 million and in 12 in months year. or so later they have to pay 15 million just how do you explain that just That's how free is the force of demand and supply that pushes someone to pay over and above like such an astronomical sum if i go to borrow 1.3 million shillings clearly i am out of means to raise even 5 million shillings and you're expecting me to pay 15 million at the end of of 12 months how what's 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 the logic how can do you even explain I, can, can this? I speak to that i'll first give a disclaimer before i comment on that mm. first is when we're pressed with the comments uh, from his excellency the president mm. and a number of uh, political leaders whom we love and cherish <laughs> so much <laughs> so when such things arose umra swung into action they said, look, we have been told we have to propose some percentage. Mm-hmm. We have to have justification for any percentage that we propose. Mm-hmm. We moved as far as Minister of Finance. Mm-hmm. We broke down, if I am borrowing from the bank, mm-hmm. how much do I pay to the bank Yes. per month? Mm-hmm. We looked at an average of 2%. Mm-hmm. Yes. We said, look, if I'm operating this business, mm-hmm. what are my operational expenses? Mm-hmm. And what percentage can they command on the rate? Yes. We uh, highlighted a percentage, you know, in that category yes. of the operation expense. Yes. Now we have covered the bit of cost of capital, mm-hmm. we've covered the bit of operational operation. expense. We are saying, look, the risk. I also am not, uh, um, I'm not a volunteer. Mm-hmm. I need to have some bit of profit. Exactly. Yes. What mark can I add yes. on this thing? Mm-hmm. Yes. When we added up the different, all those costs mm-hmm. and the loan recovery costs, mm-hmm. because see, we, we are lending to some of the risk risk the categories. Risk, the highest High risk, risk category. Yes. So you have to also put a, a cost on recovery. Mm-hmm. Yes. A recovery cost. Yes. For engaging lawyers for what? The lawyers got these things are very Police. expensive. Yeah, absolutely. You cannot just still, you know do them on words. Mm-hmm. You have to pay some money. Mm-hmm. So when we added up with the discussion with Umra, mm. which of course we refused as lenders because we don't want to be capped because mm. it's a free market economy. Mm. But I said worst to worst Mm. Because everyone is asking, what if we from the 2.8? Fig- yes. We need a figure. Yes. What if from the 2.8? Mm. So when we computed, it actually came to about 8.3% per month. I think, I think this conversation is now good. Because if you we were, we were discussing like that before, we wouldn't even be having a challenge. Mm-hmm. No, but the point is, even after this, because we were engaged, mm-hmm. we discussed that even though we're not pushing for the capping because mm-hmm. it's a free market economy, mm-hmm. we said at least there are a bit of, there are a bit of justifications mm-hmm. that even if you're going to put this, this cap, mm-hmm. even global people, mm-hmm. at a macro level, as I told you earlier, mm-hmm. it affects the economy. Mm-hmm. An investor will know that someone will wake up and say, you know what, when they have already invested billions of dollars, and say, we are putting different law. So we agreed with Umrah. Mm. We said, no, it's a free market economy, but if worse comes to worse, mm. can we justify the rate? Mm. And we said, the, exp- the cost of capital is this, operational expense is this, recovery fee is this, and then with a markup of probably 1% as profit, because I'm not a volunteer, I'm, I'm here to make a bit of business, mm-hmm. it came to about 8.3. That's now, when you look at 2.8 in 12 months. From 2 to 8. But so, also, so, but also... But still. What we wanted to highlight? It's still, it's still no, you know, you, you know, it's you know why you're saying it's but high. They were charging 300. But you know why you're saying it's too high. Mm-hmm. What people have not understood mm-hmm. is that we're not long-term lenders. We don't lend long-term. I'm told we're having one caller. <laughs> Stephen, we have a caller. Yes, one caller Good. on the line. Hello. Good morning, madam. Good morning. Thank you for calling. Uh, uh, this is Julius from uh, Kampala Town. Yes, Julius. Town, Town, yes. Thank you for calling. So, uh, Please share your thoughts or question. Yes, madam. So according to what I've, I've listened, so according to what I've heard, mm. I think uh, those governments, uh, whoever approved the, those laws of 2.8%, mm. I think they made it on, on they were biased. Mm-hmm. According to what I've heard that the MP talk about, 
they took a small sample of those uh, money lenders who are overcharging people and decided to make uh, laws conclude on behalf of others, basing on few who are not even registered. Then secondly, I had that gentleman, the president of the Lenders Association, ask the, the Honorable. He was like, according to the Max CD, the, uh, the Matsuke uh, example, the Combo example, where is the problem if someone takes 10% on someone who does 67% per month? I hadn't had that Honorable answer, and I was waiting for, answer, for, for her answers. She, she hasn't answered. Where is the problem? If someone takes 10%, on someone who makes a 67% per month, where is the issue? Meaning that the, that's the question I'm waiting for, that's the answer I'm waiting for about that question, where the problem is. To answer from that honorable, where the issue comes from. Then uh, the other question I'm asking, the last one, is for her to clarify, couldn't the, the government follow out and, 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 and regulate the Quackman lenders? who are overcharging, who are in 20%, 25%, 25%. Not only talk, taking that sample and decide for all others who are good as well. That's my question, madam. Any time really for, for us to actually be signing mm -hmm. out. But if you could just quickly, quickly in a minute. Quickly in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing is that people look at, 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 at us in the lens of long term. Mm -hmm. When you say I'm lending at probably two pers uh, 3% or 5%, Someone computes it annually. Mm. The thing is, we come in as a bridge. Mm. As a bridge. It is a crisis that we come in at. Just given the examples that I shared. Mm. We come in quick to rescue someone. So you're not long-term lenders. Mm. If you compute that rate for one month or two months or three months, which sometimes is the maximum for the turnover, mm. it does not come to that percentage of 200 or 300 percent. Mm -hmm. It is a contained percentage. So let people understand that we are not long-term lenders. Mm. We only come in when the banks are telling these people, come after three months, and these people have to clear consignments. Mm. Yet these markets told people how to sell them a token and the food to, mm. to the public. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Faith, there was a question for you, but I don't even know how you can respond to that when it's already time. But I don't just I briefly, didn't even get the question. Oh, of course, he was talking about the woman who imported comes, and that's the disadvantage with calling at the last minute. We don't give you enough time to actually respond to, to your questions. But the issue is, as if I had Julia saying that those who propose the cap were biased based on a small sample, mm. and I want to disagree with him. The sample, actually, of those who have been charging more than 10% is bigger. Mm. The more than 10% per month is much bigger than those who are charging below that, mm -hmm. if they ever existed, actually. But I, I, I liked one, what my colleague said here, that we should do, find a way of computing the actual cost, find the rate. even a profit, to find a rate which is stable for both the money lender and the, and the, and and the borrower. The borrower. Mm. To leave it open the way it has been for the last eight years is what has caused us serious mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. And it has created mistrust to the extent that People like is, is Serun Joji are now saying that money lenders are coming from one region. They are looking at where is he coming from mm -hmm. instead of looking at the cost, the, the service, the, service, so the rate, the, 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 mm. the, the, the actual detail. So they look like they, they have felt like, oh, people are coming to exploit us, mm. and yet people are coming to offer a service. Mm. So leaving this sector open the way John Ade said, that we leave it open to market forces of demand and supply could potentially split the country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we've been talking about how to check the operations of money lenders. Thank you to my guest, John Walugembe, who left us, uh, Jonan Kandwanaho, and uh, Honorable Faith Nakut. Uh, this is VPN. My name is Judith Atim. Thank you very much to all of you.